Coach Augustine Igovon, you know, the temporary coach for the Nigerian Super Eagles. I think he's the right coach, you know, for the team. I read an article. I read an article, you know, of Coach Igor Vaughn speaking about uh, like his style of play that he wants to implement for the Nigerian Super Eagles. And he basically said uh, he wants the Super Eagles to play entertaining, upbeat, attacking African style of play. You know, he wants our players to be creative and attacking, you know, which is like the prototypical, stereotypical African style of play, you know. And he said when our players don't have the ball, he wants everyone on the field pressing and playing defense to get the ball, you know. Sometimes, you know, in football and soccer, you know, the offensive players kind of slack off on defense, you know, and they give their opponents, you know, extra space when they have the ball. <laughs> when, they, when the opponents have the ball, a lot of the offensive, play, offensive players don't try to get the ball back and tackle for the ball because they figure, oh, I'm not a defender anyway, so I can slack off and give <laughs> the person with the ball, you know, some space, you know. But with this new Super Eagle squad, our coach, Ugo Vaughn, he wants even our strikers and our offensive midfielders to give full defensive efforts, you know. So basically, the 10 players on the field you know, are combo players. Combo, they're both, all players on the field, you know, are defenders, and all players on the field should bring or add effort to the offensive attacks. <laughs> you know, because if you want to have um, a, a successful attacking team, the whole team has to put an effort to attack. Not only the strikers need to put effort in for attack, not only the midfielders <laughs> need to put in effort for an attack, but, you know, a lot of times the attack starts from the defensive end. So if the attack begins from the defensive end, because a lot of times the goalie, will kick the ball to the defenders. And the defenders, a lot of times, have the ball and need to push the ball forward. You know, so our defenders need to have offensive talent as well because we need the defenders have the ball a lot of times and they need to pass the ball to the midfielders and they need to pass the ball to the strikers. So our defenders need to know how to play make pass the ball um, effectively, pass the ball with accurate passes. And our defenders need to know how to score. And our defenders need to be f fast enough to push the ball forward and push for an attack <laughs> themselves. You know, it's basically like you have 10 midfielders on the field at once. That's the style of play Nigeria is going for, you know. And I say 10 mid midfielders on the field because midfielders usually have double duty. Midfielders usually are offensive and defensive at the same time because midfielders, <laughs> they're in that middle of the field and you know, one important thing for midfielders, you know, if the opponent has the ball, you know, in the middle of the field and they're charging at you for an attack, midfielders need to know how to draw back and help out with defense. All right. And that's just, and on the other hand, on the opposite side of the coin, you know, when midfielders get that ball in the mid middle of the field, they need to be able to 
push the ball forward and pass the ball to the strikers or even score a goal themselves. So midfielders have both offensive and defensive duties, mainly due to the fact they're in that middle of the field. So with Equal Vaughn's style of play from what he said, he basically wants 10 midfielders on the field at once. All of our players are going to be playing offensive duties and defensive duties because our coach said, Eagle Vaughn, he, he said he, want the, he wants the Super Eagle players, even the offensive players, to constantly press for the ball when they don't have the ball in possession so they can regain possession of the ball, you know. So even our, our um, offensive players should have a defensive know-how, you know, defensive duties, you know. And since he said he wants our team to be attack-oriented, a lot of times the, the attack a lot of times start from the defense. The defense has the ball a lot of times, so the defense has to know how to play make or push the ball forward you know, for an offensive attack, you know, to help out with the attack. So even our defenders should have, should help out and bring something to the offense, you know. And I think that style of play, you know, that's basically, I think, what Igor Vaughn might be going for is like mass attack, mass defense. And yes, that that style of play is perfect for the Super Eagles because our 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 squad has the talent for it. You know, um, certain styles of play fit certain teams because certain teams have certain skill, a certain skill set. You know, a style of play for one team might not work for another team, you know? You know, so every team has its own specific style of play that works for them. And since the Super Eagle p players are like young, they're physical, you know, African players are naturally physical, athletic, fast, skillful, talented young players, you know, on our team, we should be pushing, running up the field and pushing for an attack and using our athleticism to our strength. You know, our last coach, Gernot Roy, his style of play was boring. Um, you rarely, with Ger, under Gernot Roy, you really saw the Super Eagle players running full speed, you know, for an attack. We we're just passing the ball randomly side to side on the field and it was like wow we have all these young skillful fast athletic players why aren't we using our uh, athleticism and speed to push forward and running full speed up the field for an attack <laughs> I mean the style of play Gerard Roy was forcing the Super Eagles to play did not fit um, our players, you know, it was too much passing, too much needless passing. <laughs> um, on the Gurnai Roy, um, our defenders would just pass the ball back and forth, side to side to each other without advancing the ball up the field for an attack so we can score. With the mass attack, mass defense, you know, style of play, you know, if you want to attack, attack. You feel me? I mean, it should be minimal passing. We shouldn't just be passing the ball back and forth in de on defense. We shouldn't just be passing the ball side to side, <laughs> the field, in the midfield, you know. Attack the ball up the field you know, and score a goal. Like, it's that simple. African soccer, you know, 
should be simple, straightforward, you know, and that's the African mentality, you know, don't overcomplicate things. <laughs> See, African players and European players, we naturally have a different mentality, you know. Um, you can't coach African players like how you coach European players. I mean, it's just we naturally have a different mentality and we just play a different game of football and soccer. So, And I'm glad, man. I'm glad that um, Ugo Vaughn is our temporary coach. I've seen him speak several times in a few different videos, and I saw this one particular video of Coach Igor Vaughn speaking about the Nigerian Super Eagles, and he was speaking, also speaking about like his soccer knowledge. Man, like he was talking about all these formations and styles of play. Igor Vaughn has like a, a very high football IQ. He knows the game of football. That's what I saw in that video. And I felt very confident that he knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, he was coached for the Super Eagles before and he got third, like in 2006, Igor Vaughn, you know, he got third place in 2006, you know, in the African Cup of Nations. <laughs> so he, he's had some sort of success as coach before and he knows Nigerian and African players. He knows the Nigerian soccer mentality. You know, he knows how to coach African players. Most European coaches, they don't know how to coach African players, you know. Um, and like hit, hit. Iguavon, by watching a couple of his interviews, you know, I can kind of kind of sense his personality type. You know, he's the type of person who can bring the best out of someone. You know, he's the type of person, Igor Vaughn is that type of person who can bring the confidence and that fighting spirit out of the Nigerian Super Eagles so we can play our hardest, you know. Under Gurna Aurora, you know, from the last few games I saw the Super Eagles play under Gurna Aurora, I mean, it just, our players look uninspiring under him, you know. <laughs> so with Igor Vaughn, man, he's going to give our players a new drive to, like, play, you know. He's going to give our players confidence, and that's that's just this type of person that, from watching his interviews, that he comes off as, so. <clears throat> and if Nigeria wins this up and coming 2022 African Cup of Nations, then Coach Igor Vaughn, he's most likely going to become our permanent coach, you know. And if we win this African Cup of Nations, Coach Igor Vaughn, he'll be our coach in the World Cup qualifiers, you know. And he'll be our coach if we qualify for the World Cup. And, man, Nigeria definitely has the talent, you know, to win the African Cup of Nations. Like, let's keep it real. We have, like, we have, like, damn near 10 world-class players on the Super Eagles currently. It's like the talent on this current squad is crazy. You know, it's unbelievable. We have Victor Ozeman, who plays for Napoli. You know, Victor Ozeman is one of the top scorers in Serie A in Italy. You know, Victor Ozeman, whenever he plays for the Super Eagles, he scored goals, you know. For the past... Really, for the past year or so, Victor Olsenman, like, it's the reason why the Super Eagles have been winning games. If it wasn't for Victor Olsenman, <laughs> the Super Eagles for the past year or so would, would, wouldn't, would not be winning any games at all. I mean, Victor Olsenman, he he's been the only player on the squad that has been playing with heart 
and playing hard, you know, and playing like he's inspired. He wants to win. And Victor Oseman is definitely a world-class level player. We have Emmanuel Dennis. Emmanuel Dennis plays for Watford in the Premier League. You know, he's one that um, he's one of the currently currently Emmanuel Dennis. He's one of the leading scorers in the Premier League. Um, I know he's top ten in the in the Premier League as far as goal scored, and I believe he's top ten in the Premier League as far as assist so Emmanuel Dennis you know he can score he can play make he's currently a world-class level player (laughs) hey another world-class level player on our team how can I hurt you you feel me (laughs) um then we have um who else we have Alex Iwobi Alex Iwobi you know, he can be a world-class level player when he wants to. And we, we've witnessed it several on several occasions. You know, Alex Iwobi, when he wants to, when he has that confidence, he can be a world-class level player. And Igor Vaughn, man, he comes off the type of – as the type of coach who can bring the confidence out of any player. <laughs> I can just tell by his body language, man. He'll make you confident. And he knows how African players are. He's Nigerian himself. He played on the Iguavon. He played on the Nigerian team back in the 90s. He coached the Nigerian team. So our players are going to be more comfortable interacting with a Nigerian coach as opposed to a European coach. You know, naturally, you're just more comfortable around your own people. <laughs> so that's the benefits of having a Nigerian coach over a foreign coach. So Coach Igor Vaughn, he's most likely going to bring that confidence out of Alex Iwobi. And Alex Iwobi is at a world-class level tier when he has confidence. You know, we've seen Alex Iwobi play world-class, you know, with Everton at Arsenal. And we've seen him play at a world-class level, scoring goals, making assists, playmaking with the Nigerian Super Eagles. So... We definitely know Axel Wolby has it in him to play at that very high level. Then we have also on the Super Eagle squad, we have Chidera Ijuke. Chidera Ijuke has been rated top three dribblers in um, Europe. He's one of the best dribblers in the world. You know, he's quick. You know, he, he's a perfect um, center or attacking midfielder. He could just keep possession of the ball and push the ball forward, you know, with his dribbling skills and creativity. Then we have Taiwo Awoni. I think I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly, but Taiwo Awoni, if I'm even pronouncing his name right. Um, <laughs> He's one of the top scorers in the um, German Bundesliga. You know, in the Bundesliga League, you know, Taiwo, he's um, one of the top scorers. And we have him in our squad. <laughs> he's like top 10 or top 5 in, in goal scored in the um, German Bundesliga League. So we have Samuel Chukwueze. He He's currently one of the best wingers in the Spain La Liga. You know, that's number another top league in Europe. And he's been scoring goals for his La Liga squad, you know, the past few games. And he always is a um tempo turn up <laughs> type of player for the Super Eagle Super Eagles. He's fast on that wing and he could put the ball in the net. So that's another world class level player we have. Wilford and Didi you know, he's one of the best defensive midfielders in the world. There's been a couple seasons where Wilfred and Didi has um, led the Premier League and the amount of tackles. So Wilfred and Didi, he's a world-class 
defensive midfielder. Then another world-class level player we have is Sadiq Umar. Sadiq Umar, I believe he's top five in goal scored in the um, tier two Spanish league. <laughs> you know, he could put the ball back in, in, the, in the back of the net. Sadiq Umar is one of the top scorers in his league. He's another world-class level player that we have. And we have Joe Rebo, which is arguably one of the best, or if not the best, midfielder in the um, tier two football league in England. You know, you know, there's a league in England that's right under the Premier League, and that's the league Joe Rebo is like the best midfielder in. So he's world class. And some some people might think, man, the, the tier two Spanish league, the tier two England league, they're not as good. So you can't, they can't have any world class level players in them. That's bullshit, man. A lot of these so quote unquote lower league, <laughs> like tier two um English league and a tier two Spanish league, a lot of them can a lot of those teams can outplay the fucking the Premier League and La Liga teams. So man, don't underrate them. And we probably have even more <laughs> world class level players on our squad right now, but I probably just can't remember their names right now. Well, yeah, this this current team is fucking stacked. And we have the talent to win the, this up and coming AFCON. We definitely do. And if we win this AFCON, you know, Augustine Ugovan, he's going to become the Nigerian Super Eagles permanent coach. And I believe that's the right decision because I don't want us to have a foreign coach, a foreign coach can rob us. A European foreign coach can rob us. And you don't know if a European coach, a white European coach, has the best interest of the Nigerian Super Eagles. Um, racism is very alive and well, especially in the game of football and soccer. <laughs> um there's not too many European soccer fans. You know, there's not too many European soccer football fanatics that will want Nigeria, the biggest black country in the world, to rise up above, you know, the European teams. <laughs> like, let's keep, let's keep it real. And, you know, most European coaches, of course, they're most likely European football fanatics you know, who have so much of a diehard love for their home country team. So let's say if Nigeria hires a Portuguese coach and in a World Cup, Nigeria faces off with Portugal. <laughs> who is our coach? Who is our Portuguese coach really going to root for? Nigeria or Portugal? You know, no Portuguese soccer fan, soccer fanatic who loves Portuguese soccer, grew up in Portugal, grew up watching the Portuguese national team, will want Nigeria, the biggest black country in the world, you know, to beat Portugal. So if our Portuguese coach for the Super Eagles would play off with Nigeria in the World Cup, I wouldn't be surprised if that Portuguese coach found a way to bench our best players while playing Portugal in the World Cup. <laughs> you know, soccer is like that, man. Soccer is very racist, and soccer has a strong cultural and national aspect to it. <laughs> but are you guys? Peace.